Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Father. As we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, Give us yourself to heal us and to give us strength. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Let your hearts seek the Lord. May we all rejoice. And almighty and ever-living God, increase our faith, our hope, and our charity. Make us love what you command, so that what we merit you may promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us be attentive as we listen to the Word of God. A reading from the book of Exodus. Thus says the Lord, You shall not molest or oppress an alien, for you were once aliens yourselves in the land of Egypt. You shall not wrong any widow or orphan, if ever you wrong them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry. My wrath will flare up and I will kill you with the sword. Then your own wives will be widows and your children orphans. If you lend money to one of your poor neighbors amongst my people, you shall not act like an extortioner toward him by demanding interest from him. If you take your neighbor's cloak as a pledge, you shall return it to him before sunset. 
for this cloak of his is the only covering he has for his body. What else has he to sleep in? If he cries out to me, I will hear him, for I am compassionate. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. saving strength, my stronghold. I cry out, praise be the Lord, and see, I am saved from my foes. I love you, And blessed be my rock. May the God of my salvation be exalted. The Lord gives great victories to his king and shows merciful love for his anointed. I love you. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, you know what sort of people we are among you for your sake. And you became imitators of us and of the Lord, receiving the word in great affliction with joy from the Holy Spirit so that you became a model for all the believers in Macedonia and in Achaia. For from you, the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only in Macedonia and in Achaia, but in every place your faith in God has gone forth, so that we have no need to say anything. For they themselves openly declare about us what sort of reception we had among you and how you turn to God from idols to serve the living and true God and to await his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who delivers us from the coming wrath. The word of the Lord. God, be in your heart. 
tongue and lips that you may worthy proclaim this holy gospel of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia. from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory be to you, Lord. Lord. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a scholar of the law, tested him by asking, Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and with all of your mind. This is the greatest and the first commandment. The second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. The whole law and the prophets depend on these two commandments. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Now I know some of you are looking at the deacon and myself, and you are thinking, oh look, we're having mass tonight with Abbott and Costello. <laughs> but my name is Father David Powers, and I'm actually from Alton, New Hampshire originally, so it's nice to be back in the Granite State. But since 1988, I have been a home missionary. I belong to a religious order called the Pyrrhus Fathers. And I'm here this weekend with the Society of the Propagation of the Faith to conduct the annual Missionary Cooperative Appeal. My homily will be in four parts. First, I'm going to comment on the readings. Then I'm going to tell you something about the founder of my religious order that might surprise you. I will talk about my missionary work in the home missions of the United States. And finally, I'll be asking for your prayers and your financial support. As you leave the church, you'll see the free will offering baskets for your donations for the missionary work of the Pyrrhus Fathers. Now, the readings. Readings remind us of an essential truth. This is the second Sunday people have tried to trick Jesus. Last week we had two groups. We had the Herodians and we had the Sadducees that tried to trap Jesus by asking him a question that no matter which way he answered, somebody would be in disagreement with. The Pharisees take their turn today. And Jesus answers in a way they weren't expecting. Now, the Pharisees were literal interpreters of the law. The law was contained, 617 of them, contained the books of Leviticus, and Numbers, and Exodus. Now, they have another book called the Mitzvah. This is an interpretation of the laws. This is sort of like biblical commentary. And the mitzvah was created by certain learned rabbis. And one of the questions that they were wrestling with, which of those 617 commandments was the greatest? Rabbi so-and-so would say this. Rabbi so-and-so would say that. Rabbi so-and-so would say this other one. So they were thinking that no matter which way Jesus answered, they would say, but Rabbi so-and-so disagrees with you. So 
what does Jesus do? You need to know that for a good, pious Jew, there is a prayer. Every Jew recites in the morning and in the evening. And that prayer is called the Shema. And it is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is your God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind. Every single Jew says that prayer every single day, morning and night. How are you going to disagree with it? So Jesus doesn't go to the 617 prayers and commandments. He goes to the Shema. And the Pharisees kind of taken aback. Can't argue with that one. And then Jesus adds something else. And that's kind of where the first reading came in. In the first reading, they were reminding us that if you truly love the Lord with all your heart, you can't help but love your neighbor as well. One goes with the other. Can't really argue with that. And so the Pharisee was reduced. He's trying to trick him because Jesus is able to look into the heart of a person. Last week and this week, Jesus listens to the question and says, is this really a sincere question? If it is, I'll answer it. If not, I'll answer it too, but not in the way they were expecting. So now the question that the learned lawyer asks Jesus kind of we have to take Jesus' answer and say, are we doing this in our lives? If we love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, strength, and mind, what are we doing to reflect that love? And are we doing it on a consistent basis throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout the year? Are we showing, are we expressing our love? Sometimes, some people might say we live in a society in which we're afraid to express our religious belief for fear of offending someone. I say baloney. We are Catholics. We need to demonstrate by our words and by our actions that faith we profess. I'm not saying go knocking on the door and say, would you like to know about Jesus? I'm not saying do that. But what I am saying is how, what we say, how we live our lives should be a reflection of that faith we profess. That relationship we have with God, and there's all kinds of ways we can express our love for the Lord. Just as there are 617 different commandments, there are hundreds of ways we can express our love for God and our love and concern for our neighbor. One of those ways today is through the mission appeal helping our brothers and sisters in need. Now, the Pierce Fathers, we were founded by a young Spanish priest. His name was Jose de Calasanz. The latter part of the 16th century, he went to Rome in search of a good position in the church. But the Holy Spirit had other plans. He visited the poorest section of the city, an area called the Trastevere. There he saw the children, the poor gutter children of Rome, children trapped in a vicious cycle and spire of poverty, despair, and hopelessness. St. Joseph said that was wrong, and what he did changed the world. And might surprise you. In the year 1597, in the church of Santa Dorothea, Joseph Calasanctius opened the world's first free public school. The public school system was started by a Catholic priest 
in a Catholic church. He attracted a group of young men. They formed a new religious order, my order, the Purest Fathers. And we are the only order of priests whose members profess a fourth religious vow to educate youth, especially the poor. Today, there are 1,600 Purest Fathers in 35 nations around the world. We can be found in all the traditional foreign missions, countries in Asia, Africa. But I work in what we call the home missions, places in the United States of America where third world conditions exist. And I work in the hills of eastern Kentucky, in Appalachia, the land of the Hatfields and McCoys. Moonshine, <laughs> Loretta Lynn, Dwight Yoakam, and ladies, Billy Ray Cyrus. National Public Radio listed the 25 poorest counties of the United States. Eight of them, nearly one third, are in eastern Kentucky. Now, what do missionaries do? Any missionaries, foreign missionaries, home missionaries, we all do three things. The first thing we do is a reminder of what the readings today tell us to do. By our words and actions do we proclaim the good news. There is a God who made us in his likeness and image, who loves us who calls us to a personal relationship and a God who gives us the gift of his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist. Second thing missionaries do, these are some of the practical things. Food pantries, clothing addicts, medical clinics. In 1988, we opened the Purest Appalachian Outreach Ministry. Among the things we do are helping burnout victims. Many of the homes in eastern Kentucky are heated by coal. Coal burns three to four times hotter than wood, one stray ember. The home a family has lived in for generations goes up in flames, and people turn to the church for spiritual and material support. At Christmas time, we have a giving tree program. Over 1,000 children receive Christmas presents through our giving tree program. During the summer, we have emergency home repair. People give of their time, talent, and treasure. Fixing a porch, repairing a roof, building a handicapped access ramp. All short-term stopgap needs. What about long-term needs? How do you help a people help themselves? Spiritually, making sure there are churches where the people of God can pray, can sing, and can receive Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Eucharist. But then to make sure there are Catholic schools, like St. Patrick's, where people can have a complete education, a love of God, the church, and their faith, a love of reading, writing, and arithmetic. So in 1990, we opened the Purist School completely tuition-free, the only college preparatory school in the 50 counties of eastern Kentucky, helping children help themselves, children like Jennifer. Jennifer is one of my students, comes from a family statisticians love, a single mother with four daughters, all their lives victims, spouse abuse, alcoholism, drug addiction, never knowing from one day to another where they're going to stay, how they're going to survive, until one day, Jennifer's mother said, enough. She said, you're the last of my daughters. You're gifted and talented. There's a school, a new school, a Catholic school, the Pyrrhus School. Jennifer, promise me you'll go to that school. Promise me you'll study and persevere. Promise me you will be what I know God has given you the gift to be. Jennifer remembered that. And after four long years, Jennifer did something 
no one in her entire family had ever done before. Jennifer graduated from high school. In Floyd County, less than 25% of the children will graduate from high school. She then did the unbelievable. She went to college. Jennifer was a nursing major at Transylvania University, Lexington, Kentucky. And no, it is not true. They only offer night classes at Transylvania. Jennifer will succeed. What about Wendell, Rachel, Roy, and Ann? In their names, I come to you and I ask for your help. Our school has grown too large. We had to buy a new building, 10,000 square feet larger than our current building. And we found one. It used to be a parachute factory. And we're now raising funds to change a parachute factory into a tuition free Catholic school. To do that, I ask for your help in two ways. First, I ask for your prayers. No missionary can succeed without the prayers of the people of God. Second, I ask for your financial support. As you leave the church and you walk by the baskets, many of you had a certain amount you intended to drop in. Today, I want to challenge you to double or triple what you were going to give. Before you put your offering in those baskets, please consider this. How much does it cost for you to fill your car, your truck, your boat with one tank of gas? Would you put one tank of gas in the second collection? How about one utility bill? Would you put one utility bill in the second collection basket? When you go out to eat to your favorite restaurant, and Portsmouth has a lot of good restaurants. How much is one meal at your favorite restaurant? Would you put one meal in the second basket? Instead of a $1 bill, drop in a five. Instead of a five, drop in a 10. Instead of General Andrew Jackson, drop in General Ulysses S. Grant. And if Ben Franklin is out there, we like Ben. If you're going to put in a check, write the check to the parish, and in the memo, put for the missions. Ladies and gentlemen, we all have the ability to pray for the missions, financially support the missions, materially assist the missions, helping your brothers and sisters you may never meet to accomplish a wonderful goal of helping themselves and their community. You'll notice I have a trifold in the back, has some pictures from our outreach ministry you can take a look at. I've got some blue brochures. I know you're not going to remember everything I had to say, and after all, I am a school teacher. We have to have handouts. And may the blessing of Almighty God remain and descend upon you, this parish, our country, and our holy Catholic Church. And may you be blessed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. And now let us stand and proudly profess our faith. I believe in one God. Father the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken for the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, you've told us when two or more are gathered together in your name, you are present. Please listen as we present and offer to you these special and particular intentions. That our love for God and neighbor may be evident in the worship and outreach of our parish family, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Mary's example of receptivity to God's call might inspire all of us in times of hesitancy or uncertainty about stepping out in faith. May we find in her rosary a source of abundant grace and deeper understanding of the mysteries of God's action in our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish school continue to be built up as a community of caring and unity in the heart of Jesus, and for all those committed to the mission of Catholic education, our family, staff, and benefactors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all in military service may be protected from harm and that their families find comfort as they long for their homecoming, for the peace that the world cannot give, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our departed loved ones, especially the deceased of our parish family, for whom this Holy Mass is offered, will enjoy the fullness of eternal life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we remember the needs of one another and all who have asked for our prayers, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the safety of all the little ones who will be going trick-or-treating this week. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, you know what is in our heart. You know what is on our mind. Please lead us and guide us so that everything we may say, do, think, and feel may be done for the greater glory and honor of your name. We ask and we pray for this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join together singing number 508, we have been told.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given, human hands have made. It will become for us bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, let us come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. And pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look, we pray, O Lord, on these offerings we make to your majesty, that whatever is done by us in your service may be directed above all to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin Mary. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, but by rising from the dead, he gave us eternal life. And so the angels and archangels, the thrones and dominions, and all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as, without end, we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray. Send down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do 
this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat, eat this, this bread, bread and drink, drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially the deceased members of this parish, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, the Blessed Apostles, Saint Joseph Calisanctus, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it was through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Shalom. I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of our church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ give you safe for eternal life. Blood of Christ, give me safe for eternal life. Body of Christ. When to and poured out for all in this place. When two or more gather in your name and see your presence in each face, we treasure the gift of this sacred and poured out for all in this place. Spread the gift of your body. Wind your life blood outboard. Come join the feast. Take and believe. Become what you and poured out for all in this place. Spread our light and our life. Wine our truth and our way. Come join the feast. Take and believe. Become what you When two or more gather in your name and see the presence in each face, we treasure the gift of this sacred meal, blessed and poured out for all in this place. your manna from heaven, wine the fruit of your heart, come join the feast, take and believe, become what you receive. When to the gift of this sacred meal, blessed and poured out for all in this place. Spread your
mystery before us. Wine the hope of our dreams. Come join the feast. Take and believe. Become what you Let us pray. May your sacraments, O oh Lord, we pray, perfect in us what lies within them, that what we now celebrate in sign, we may one day possess in truth. We ask this through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love, to serve, and to praise the Lord. Thanks. Thank you once again for your kindness as you donate, as you leave to the Pierce Missions. And do not forget, on the octave of all souls, we can gain a plenary indulgence for the faithful departed by piously visiting a cemetery and praying for the dead. It's a wonderful indulgence that maybe we can offer for a loved one. Maybe there's even a grave in your local cemetery. Somebody has clearly not visited in years and you can offer an indulgence for the soul of that person in that grave. God bless you all. Thank you. Please join together in singing number 478, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling. 